Hello, my name is Michael Sandel. In recent years, I've had the privilege of visiting Japan and China and Korea to give lectures and also to engage participants in discussions of some of the biggest ethical questions of our time. And yet, despite this experience, I'm aware that relations among these three countries are tense, difficult, and the conflict seems to be getting worse. We see in the headlines discussion of uh, air defense identification zones, disputes over territories and islands, controversies about public apologies, about wartime history. And so today we're going to do an experiment. We've brought together in this studio in Tokyo university students from Japan, China, and Korea. And we're going to see whether it's possible to discuss some very sensitive issues in a spirit of mutual respect and with the aim of generating a deeper mutual understanding about the, the conflicts among these three countries. Let's turn now to the history of the present conflicts among Japan, China, and Korea. What's striking is how heavily the past seems to weigh upon present relationships. And I'd like to invite you to help me understand why that's so. And especially why the past of World War II and the war in the Asia Pacific weighs so heavily as such a powerful presence today in the disputes and in the conflicts among these three countries. Consider, for example, Germany and France. They were on opposite sides of World War II. Germany occupied France. And while those two countries have their differences today, the differences are not fraught with the experience of those years, of the 30s and 40s. You don't hear in contemporary debates or arguments between the Germans and the French frequent references to what happened back then. Why is it different with Japan, China, and Korea? Why does the past, and especially of those years, cast such a, sh a shadow, a powerful shadow, on present relations and politics, do you think? Yeah. Earl Chan from yeah. Korea. Actually, I think this is not the past because all the victims are still living in our countries. You know, all the sex slaves, they are maybe my grandma or somebody who live in my next door. So we can see them and we can hear the witness. So that's why we always feel like this kind of history is not end. And we, I think we are writing a new history now and the history is not ended because the things are already are going on and we need to make it have a good finishment. Yeah. So you, you say it isn't really past? Yes. All right, who else? Who, who would like to address this question? Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, and I think a lot of Chinese, uh, my friends and uh, other uh, the family members of me, uh, they, their attitudes towards uh, Japan and the Japanese people are really ambiguous. Some of them think that it's a good opportunity to learn from them because it's a developed country now. The others think that why you should go there because they used it to invade us. In our textbook in, from uh, middle high school, uh, we named the Second World War as an invasion. But uh, due to my experience, sorry, I need to mention that uh, the Japanese textbook have a different definition of that kind of uh, war. So, um, and they don't, your, your impression is that the Japanese textbooks, Japanese students do not, um, are not taught that it was an invasion. Yeah, do, yeah, based on my uh, experience. And uh, the government attitudes towards uh, the history was not like the uh, German, German government because they uh, apologize to the Polish people and the other uh, victims. And that's why uh, there is a political shadow between us. Yes. Okay, thank you, Yang. Now, we've heard the suggestion that Japanese students are not taught 
uh, that this was an invasion. Um, is, that, is that how you experienced it when you were in junior high school or high school? Yes. そもそもあの教えられていないわけではなくてその授業にしても結局3年間日本史を習ったとしてもその戦後史っていうの戦後史じゃないですねあの日中戦争以降が取り上げられるその内容の薄さとかも日本の,その教科書にしろ学校教育にもすごい問題があるのかなっていうふうに私自身は思っています。So, Ayumi, are you suggesting that the facts are not wrong, but too little time is devoted to that period, the period of 1937 to 1945? Yes? Mm -hmm. um, does, does everyone agree with Ayumi's account, those of you who studied in junior high and high school in Japan? Mako? えっと、私は昔あの上海に住んでいたことがあってであのそこであの現地校の友達からあの彼女と同じことをあの言われて実際にその私が自分で使ってた中学校の教科書をめくってみたらその侵略っていう2文字は書かれてあったんですけれどもどうしてそういうふうに彼女あるいは私の,その中国人のお友達が受け取るかって言ったら多分それはその日本人の中でその第二次世界大戦がその日本ではその8月15日を終戦っていうふうに呼んでいて敗戦とは呼んでいないんですね。結局そのの教科書の中で仮に書かれてていたとしても教える側あるいは教わる側の意識としてはあまりその中国や韓国ある他の国々に対するその日本がやったことっていうことに対する意識がもう薄いんじゃないのかなというふうに思います。Go ahead. I also want to add that、um, in the Japanese textbooks,、um, it is written about United States a lot, and what the Western com countries invading, trying to invade Asian countries, and that the Japanese government and the Japanese armies were trying to protect Japan and Korea and the other、um, South Asian countries. And so, what we learned is that it was a war of protection. And, you know, we all know that it didn't go so well, but at least the,、um, there was. Some part of the reasons were good. And so I was just wondering if, if the Chinese textbooks or the Korean textbooks write about the, the relationships between the Asian countries and the Western countries in those Asias. That's interesting. So the presentation is that seen from the perspective of Japan at the time in the early 20th century and in through the 30s. Japan was liberating East Asia, East Asia from Western imperialism. That's one of the interpretive frameworks. And so Eriko wonders whether that perspective is introduced or is discussed in textbooks in Korea or in China. Would anyone like to address that question? Chen?、Um. I was really surprised by the interpretation of Japanese、uh, textbook.、Uh, although they say that they want to protect us, but they are just invading in another way because they don't want those Western countries to rule us, but they themselves want to rule us. So they are just putting it in another way other than saying like protecting.、Mm -hmm. Kwon, did you want to add something? Uh, I've heard similar opinions in an exhibition、uh, in the Yoshokan Museum in Tokyo. It's near the Yasukuni Jinja. And、uh, such excuses are mentioned in Chinese history textbooks, but they are、uh, only labeled as excuses because the, 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 the Japanese army, their soldiers, or the, the politicians and generals, they claim to protect. Uh, the East Asia from the invasions of、uh, the Western world. 
for actually they have never acquired uh, an okay from China or Korea. They take it for granted, like, okay, I'm going to invade you, I'm going to uh, transform you into uh, a part of our community, but we are not a, but we never agree to do so. Yeah, we are forced to be a part of the so-called Great East Asia uh, Prosperity Circle. And what about, thank you for that, what about in Korean textbooks? Yes. Um, I, think, I think it's similar in Korean case too. It is mentioned in Korean textbook, uh, but it is more described as an excuse and deceiving. Um, and also, it's uh, described as sort of a portrayal of their f Japanese feeling of superiority over other two East Asian countries that they represent us and they can protect us from the Western countries, I believe. Right. Who else would like to comment on this? Naoya. こう、ひどいことをされたっていうのがどうしてもこうされた側としてはものすごいこう印象に残ってしまうと思うんですね。あの、例えば日本っていうのはまあその戦時中にその広島と長崎にそのアメリカからまあその攻撃を受けて、ま
I heard I heard some facts that the Vietnam in Vietnam War we did the same thing as Japan did in, for us. So we have to uh, if we want to say that Japan has uh, Japan has ha have to be apologize to us. We have to bring us uh, bring about the Vietnam War issues, and uh -huh. we also keep saying attitude toward the Vietnam. So we have to uh, more dealing with these issues. Okay. And who, who, who else can think of an example? Wu, from your history books in China. Um, I think China's history books, it, it ignored the, the bad influences of the China's cultural revolution. Because um, it undermines the whole Chinese culture. At that time, the, the tomb, even the tomb of the Confucius has been digged out. No one dared to do so over the past 2,000 years. But during that time, everybody is crazy and they lose their mind. And so many thought has been undermined. So I think it's really a big pity, but our government, they failed to face the, the truth. I think I, al I always doubt, um, does the history told by the Chinese government or by Japanese government by Korea government is the history itself. So maybe the only thing we can do is to find the truth ourselves. I see. All right, what else is missing in the textbooks that you read? Wu? As in a period in 1958 to 1960 in Chinese history. We call this period natural disaster. In that period, um, millions or maybe uh, 10 million Chinese people died of hunger. But uh, in test book, we call it natural disaster. We blame this uh, disaster to the natural reasons. Actually, my father and my grandfather told me that it's not a natural disaster at all. It's about our government's wrong policy. At that time, Chinese focused all its attention to surpass the, uh, America or England. So they did a lot in a heavy factory. Mm -hmm. So uh, but in the past, we are afraid of the government, maybe, so we we dare not to say it, so we call it natural disaster. Mm. And now more and more I realize that it's, it's a fault of our government. And I think uh, it takes, takes gar uh, courage for our government to admit it. It's the wrong thing they did in the past. Mm. It takes courage for the government yeah. to admit yes. that it did wrong. Yes. And so when we consider the various omissions that we've been discussing in textbooks, in all three countries, would you say that, that this reflects um, a, a lack of a willingness to face the hardest parts of one's own history? Maria. Uh, right now, we talked a lot about the modern history. But uh, looking back to the history book, I think maybe, maybe maybe 50 percent of the fact may be missing i think hmm. the reason i say it is because i think the if we do this discussion maybe 300 uh in edo period maybe 300 years ago i think same discussion may happen hmm. between the state of winning state and the invaded state i hmm. think the similar discussion hmm. will happen hmm. Uh, that's because I think the country or the state who won may conceive yeah. the inconvenient truth. Yeah. So I think that is happening all the time in the history. Yes. And why do you think there is the tendency throughout mm. history to write our own national narratives mm -hmm. in ways that, as you put it, conceal inconvenient truths? Is that required, do you think, to promote patriotism? Mm. Is that what it's about? Do you think history textbooks should, be, should have as one of their goals to promote patriotism? I don't know if it's the patriotism, but I think for 
a country to become united, mm. I think there needs to be a certain framework called a yes. vision yes. to lead the people. So, you know, for that reason, if certain fact is not is in conflict, that leader may try to, you know, conceal those things. Wu, you wanted to say something? I agree with Maria, and I know that actually Japanese government has apologized several times for their crimes committed. Um, like the latest time is that the Prime Minister of Japan, he um, uh, make an apology in Hong Kong University. I know you can uh, search the Wikipedia, and there is a list of uh, government's Jap uh, government Japan's apology. Yeah. And so you're familiar with these apologies, or you've read them? You read them online? Yeah, or I how read did them you? Online. And I'm shocked because, um, in my experience, um, we are never told that Japan has apologized to us. Uh -huh. Yeah. So what, how did you happen to look online and find it? Uh, to uh, prepare for this lecture, <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> I see. Well, that's yeah. interesting. In fact, one of one of the famous apologies uh, was uh, on the 50th anniversary of the end of the war by Prime Minister Muriyama, who um, said through its colonial rule and aggression, uh, Japan caused tremendous damage and suffering to the people of many countries, particularly to those of Asian nations. Um, these are irrefutable facts of history, and I express here once again my feelings of deep remorse and state my heartfelt apology. That was probably one of the ones that you saw online. Hearing Wu mention those previous apolo official apologies, does that surprise you? Uh, no, I already know that uh, 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 Japan, uh, Japan, uh, Japan government uh, had made uh, some apologies. All right. Um, what about the students from Korea? How do you view this? Um, um, yun -hae. Yeah, yun -hae. So, um, apart from Murayama conversation, there was another apology that the Japanese government made in 1993 called Kuno Conversation. And in that apology, Kuno, Mr. Kuno actually admitted that the sex slaves existed in, during the colonization of Korea and China and other countries. But nowadays, my impression is that if, even though the person made it publicly clear that there was a sl sex slaves existed in the past, um, there are some movements of actually modifying the conversation. And even the intention of doing so makes me conf confused and wonder about the sincerity of those kinds of apologies. And it, it feels like depending on which government is um, ruling the country, the, ten the, ten the stance that they're taking can be different. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of confusing. For me. So it's interesting you mentioned the Kono statement. This was in 1993 about the sex slaves, the so-called comfort women, expressing an apology. And there's been a lot of debate about whether Japan would or would not revise that statement. Uh, of the Korean uh, members of our group, um, is everyone? F f uh, familiar and aware, people you know, your, your friends in university, uh, aware of the apology, the Kono statement? I heard that the statement is existed yeah. in the past. Yes. But uh, in, my, in my aspect, I think that the, usually the government thinking, uh, the Japanese government thinking and uh, uh, the Japanese people thinking is very separated. Even though the, Jap the Japanese government to say apologize to us, uh, we feel that the Japan really apologize in sincere mind because they don't think any interesting about it. So, even though when I when I meet some Japanese friends, they told about oh sorry for us, uh, so, uh, sorry for that actions, but I don't never heard about it. Uh -huh. Would anyone like to respond to what Konha has said? Yes, go ahead. To, I know, こういう意見がいいかどうかわからないんですけれども、その
日頃から思うことがありましてその自分がやったことだったらその責任を取るっていうのはできると思うんですよ謝るなりなんそ,れそれなりの誠意を見せるなりでも私はやそ聞いてはいるし知ってはいるし日本がやったこととしてすごい最低なことだと思うんですけれども私がやったことではないのでどうやって責任を取ってどういうふうに謝る形が一番いいのかっていうのがなんか自分の,その個別的な個人的な体験としてわからないっていうところが大きいかなっていうふうに今思いました。All right, so Ayumi is raising a broader philosophical question, which is we're talking here about apologies for past wrongs, apologies for actions undertaken by previous generations. Ayumi, are you suggesting that moral, in moral responsibility is an individual matter, not a collective matter, not Uh, that there is no collective moral responsibility that reaches across generations. Is that what you're suggesting? So, yes, I think that the same thing is 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 that the same thing 日本に限らず起きないようにしていく責任はあると思いますでもどういうふうに謝れば例えば韓国の方は納得してくれるのかっていうことに関しては私はあの分からないですしどういう方法がベストなのかっていうのが分からないので私が謝罪,し謝罪すべきかどうかって問われた時にすごく混乱しますし謝罪すべきなのかが分からないっていうのが正直な意見です。That's it. All right. It's an interesting question. Jungar, how would you respond? Well, uh, um, I personally don't think you should apologize me that um, something bad happened between us. But um, you said you um, should know that um, you did uh, um, bad things in the past. But um, what our impression is that you are not doing your best To keep that、uh, position as,、uh, as far as your government is concerned. All right.、Um, I want to get back to this philosophical question about whether it's possible to apologize and to be morally responsible for injustices committed in the past.、And、the philosophical question that Ayumi raises. Now, here we are.、Um, No one here, including me, was even born during the time of World War II. So Ayumi is asking an interesting question. Is it, if, if an apology presupposes having some degree of moral responsibility, sharing in moral responsibility for an injustice, how is it possible for This generation, for us, to be morally responsible for injustices committed in previous generations before we were born. What would you say? It's an interesting philosophical question about moral responsibility. What do you think about it?、Uh, it's a difficult question for me. Was any of you, any of us? <laughs> All right,、um, well, see, let me give you an example of this perplexity. In the US, one of the great injustices of the American past is slavery. And recently, there's been a debate about whether Congress and the American people should give reparations or restitution for the injustice of slavery. And there was a debate about this in the US Congress. And one congressman. Who was opposed to reparations for slavery made an argument very similar, Ayumi, to yours. He said, I never owned any slaves. Why should I have to pay for the injustice of slavery, which happened generations ago before I was born? Ayumi, that essentially was the challenge that you. Put to us. Yes? All right. I, 
This is admittedly a philosophical question. What do you think about that argument? Yes. Um, well, technically that's true because he or she never owned the slave. Right. And, um, that he, also he or she could argue that um, it seems like I don't have any responsibility. Uh, but, well, I think there's no human can live on this earth without our ancestors, uh -huh. which means everything is connected from the past. So if we want to deny the past, then we, we should um, abandon all these devices and everything that we got from the past. Mm. It seems like we gain benefits from the past and we try to avoid the benefits from the um, past is really, as you said, maybe injustice. So um, what I think is if we want to gain or if we want to utilize our life from the past things, then we also have to have some responsibility responsibility from the past as well. All right, so Sung Hyun raises a very interesting point. You're saying we're defined by our past, whether we like it or not, yeah. and therefore what our ancestors did has some claim on us. And he's also suggesting, if I understand you right, that if we're to benefit from the accomplishments and achievements of the past and take pride in them, even though we weren't around to carry out those achievements, doesn't it all go together? Don't we also have to take responsibility for the darknesses and the injustices of our ancestors or our great, great, great grandparents? Right. And especially for my personal experience, uh, I'm an engineering student. So when I study engineers, engineering stuff, I, I see lots of scientists who studied before. And then what I feel like, oh, I'm great because I don't need to study this stuff because he already studied. So oh, now I can continue the project right. or study from here. So from that sense, I was thinking, wow, I, I, I'm getting a lot of things from the past. Right. And, yeah. and therefore, with benefits also go debts to the past. Yes, right. It goes both ways. Yep. All right. Ayumi, what do you think? That's a pretty interesting reply to your challenge that Sung Hyun has made. Do you find it persuasive? So this net. と、その過去の恩恵を受けている以上責任を取らなければいけないというのはすごい納得しましたし、その通りだと思いました。私自身が疑問に感じていることは、その先ほど先生がおっしゃっていた例もそうなんですが、その政府が謝罪するべきだと
starting on that position. And when you say personalize, what do you mean? Give an example of what you have in mind. Well, it's hard to think of a mm -hmm. um, specific example, but um, All right. yeah, somebody could help. Yes, yeah. Erico. I think there's certain kinds of uh, circumstances in which we, even as a person, one person, we become a symbol of our country, hmm. especially when we go to foreign countries. Um, I've never met a comfort woman survivor before, but for example, I've met um, some students from Asian countries that came to Japan um, and they were they became the victim of hate speech and um, and when I hear those stories from them I automatically I apologize it, it's it's just how it works and also um, I've lived in the United States before so I've been called um, you know, names and racism. Um, I've been a victim of racism before, but then if I tell that to the other um, American students, they, they apologize for their countries, even though they're not, they've never done that kind of thing before. And so it's, I think in a personal level, when you become a symbol, you can become a symbol of your own countries and you can naturally apologize in some kind of certain circumstances. Mm. That's inter that was an interesting example of the person, the personalization of moral responsibility. Does that come close to what you were thinking of? Yes, yes. I, I think the point is um, you have to feel it. You have to have emotion of what has happened. I, th I think that's, that's the point of what I try to say in personalization. Mm -hmm.